Hi, I'm Lynn Adams. I'm Justin Gross. Welcome to our mid-year market update call. Uh, everything we talk about on this call today is for educational purposes only. Uh, no financial advice being given here. And uh, with that, we'll get started. So it's a good point to start mid-year, just looking at the benchmarks. Uh, the first slide you see here kind of shows there's a wide range of returns depending on what investment sector you're in. The most dynamic returns this year have been in the NASDAQ, which are 30%. S&P is up 15, uh, Russell, which is small cap stocks, is around 8, the Dow is around 5, and uh, International 7, the bond market is at 2, and real estate is slightly negative. One that jumps off the screen is obviously the NASDAQ, and uh, of course last year it was down by far worse than that, um, but we, we feel like that even in the NASDAQ, that index is very tech heavy, and there's a lot of concentration in what four or five companies that have led that. Yeah, very concentrated near the top, the top couple names that we can't name specifically, but very concentrated growth. And it's interesting, I think, to think about going into the year with the condition, the economic conditions. Most people, most analysts were be be careful with growth mm -hmm. and lean value, um, just with with things that are going on. And and so it's been part of that. To your to your point is they gave back more last year, so right. it was a natural mm -hmm. reversion to the mean, which is a classic concept, but very concentrated. Yeah, so if you look at the actual valuation and try to decide, is this a good price for these stocks? Are we over? Are we, are we under where they should be? If you look at just the S&P 500 right now, you're going to see that as of the mid-year point, we're at 19 times earnings. Historically, stocks in the S&P sell last 25 years around 16 times earnings. So we're definitely more on the expensive side of things. But I think what really makes this sort of an illusion is it's probably more expensive than that because if you look at the four or five stocks, or let's just say the top 10 stocks in the S&P 500, those top 10 stocks are selling at 29 times earnings. So you know, think about it from an earnings standpoint, you have to hold that position for almost 30 years to get your money back in just earnings. So I think that's where there's quite a bit of froth in terms of the prices that people are paying for stocks. And I, I actually would, would say that to put warning here that you probably don't wanna be buying in at this level, but I think you're gonna get better prices at some other point that's a pretty high price to pay. Yeah, as a, I had an interesting stat at the beginning of Q2, this is a Q2 call, but three growth slash tech stocks accounted for 91% of the S&P 500 total return. Like yeah. they were three stocks. So that's, um, you know, it's, it's not quite that bad now, right. but that's how concentrated the, the growth names were in returns. Right. So if you're not an investor who wants to own volatile stocks, more volatile than right. your traditional stock. Um, you may shy away from those names, but if you own the index, you're getting exposure to that mm -hmm. in a large way. I think it shows you actually a couple of things. I think it shows you the willingness of investors that want to try to grow and earn money to, to go all in. Like there's a lot of cash out there still on the sidelines. And when there is an area that there's the potential for you know really dynamic growth, which the AI sector is where a lot of this is coming from, the money and the capital are just pouring in. However, at the same time, a lot of investors don't realize how much risk is in that trade, right. you know? So it's, it's, a, it's a very narrow market through the first half of the year. Um, I do think that where there's a real opportunity and, and probably more suitable for most of our clients in terms of their risk tolerance is in the large cap value space. This slide we have here shows that relative to growth, value stocks are selling about half the price of growth. They're selling at 14 times earnings, where it's growth selling at 27 times earnings. And it also shows you historically that we're way cheaper in terms of the price of value stocks today compared to what growth usually sells for. The reason this is relevant is that if you look at historical points where there's been market disruptions or there's been uh, situations in the market where only a, a, a tight band of stocks does well, when you get a broadening out, you know, when you get an event that creates a more broadening out, that's where all these other companies tend to catch up and produce returns. And I think that's where we're positioned right now as the Dow. And I think the catalyst is probably has to do with two things. One is you can look at this chart for earnings growth year over year. Um, earnings growth is good. This year, a lot of it's come from margin. Like companies have been able to hold their margin. Revenue has been pretty slow. It's only up, you know, a half or 2.4% year to date in terms of year over year re revenue. But a lot of that has to do with this increasing interest rates and people being really scared to go out and spend that money thinking they're gonna to have to borrow at higher rates. I think when the Fed 
says we're done raising rates, I think we see the revenue increase, I think we see this market broaden out, and I think we see value begin to really creep up on growth because it will broaden out the whole entire spectrum of the market. Talking about the Fed, and <clears throat> when are they gonna stop raising rates, we got news at the end of the quarter that CPI finally was back down to 3%. Now, I know long term, the benchmark has been two and a half, but for many years, there's been times where it would itch up around 3% and, and no one really thought it was too big of a problem. Um, but if you look at this chart from just some random news feed that was on CNBC, um, you know, just this year went from six to five to four to four to three in six months. So. The trend is definitely down for CPI, and once we get to that 2.5 target rate, it's very realistic expectation that we will not see the Fed raise rates. In fact, we might see the Fed back off of rates if it got, if it drops too fast. Yeah, the old line, don't fight the Fed. Well, they're they're nearing the, the change in the tide of what they're trying to do there. Yeah, and you, you can actually break down inflation by these different subcategories, whether it's energy, vehicles, food, homes, restaurant, hotel, transportation, shelter all of the different dynamics are falling and they're falling steadily so whether it's we get one more rate hike and we're done whether we get two whether it's the end of the year it's it is in sight and i think that this is the time that you want to position for the next sort of cyclical change in the market landscape if we have steady or falling rates i think that there's there are places that the investors can benefit from in in the large scale is going to be in the the value area in the mid cap space I think corporate bonds, I think we have a, an incredible opportunity in corporate bonds right now because the yields are so high. But you can see here on these charts that inflation is definitely heading in the direction that we want it to, and it will soon be inside of the Fed uh, rate band. When you look at GDP, I think one of the things that troubles a lot of investors long term is they want to see faster growth. And you know our, our 10 year, 20 year trend line growth is right at 2%. Um, we could safely say that we're back to trend line growth now. Uh, we're not necessarily exceeding it. I know the world would love to see us having growth at three or four percent because then you multiply earnings on that and get higher returns. But I don't think we're in any sort of um, negative situation or in a in a place where we're we're expecting growth to be higher than it can actually become. Like two percent is where we're at. It's where we've been. It's where we're tracking, and it's it seems to be pretty consistent. But a, a dramatic improvement from where we've been recently with oh, some yeah. of the disruptions of COVID. And so back to a, a normal is a good way to, yeah. to look at that. Yeah, for sure. The COVID, you can see what COVID did in that in that downward glitch, but like it's, it's back on to normal trend line growth now. So not a lot to say other than we like value over growth. We're, we are optimistic that the Fed's done raising rates very soon. And at with that, I think we just, we're, we're fully invested. I mean, we don't have uh, a whole lot of money on the sidelines anymore. We've got uh, our growth models are 95% invested in stocks. Our total return are probably in the 50, 60%. Even our conservative folks, probably 30, 35% invested in stocks. And I think that's where we wanna be. The combination between the returns and our broadening out of the market, along with the dividends coming from those stocks, I think we're gonna get a pretty healthy period of time here. Um, it is important for those that we have in indexes or indices to realize that um, the S&P as a whole is a little expensive because of that concentration of those really expensive stocks in the top 10, but we still own it. I mean, we still think there's opportunity because there's still another 490 stocks there, but we have been adding to some all cap indexes, some equal weighted indexes, uh, and again, we got a little larger position than normal in value. So. We, we think we're gonna probably win on that. So that, maybe, I, I guess, caution and resist that urge to chase the yes. things that are up 30, 40% or individual names and maybe more than that, but. Um, that's, a, that's a really important concept too. I mean, everybody wants to look and say, well, what just went up and that's what they wanna go buy, but that is not how you make money. You buy low and sell high is how you make money in the stock market. So definitely don't wanna chase. Um, I think the interest rate story is, uh, is really interesting. I think we are definitely near the end of the, the rate height cycle. Uh, you know, some of the yields on bonds, on corporate bonds, especially the intermediate term, the two year, three year stuff, you know, we're seeing high quality paper in the six, 7% range. Um, you know, some of that you can buy at a discount to par right now. So if you can buy it for five to 7% discount, make six or 7% for a year or two, 
I mean, that's a stock-like return without having to take stock risk. Yeah. So that's a pretty, uh, pretty interesting place to be in the market right now. We do have more exposure in the bond market than normal. And this slide just kind of speaks to that. You know, if you get a coupon rate that's high plus buy it at a discount, um, that that sets you up for a pretty good total return. Yeah, I mean, you get four or five on the yield, you get two or three maybe price appreciation from the, the pain of last year's bond market still mm -hmm. recovering. Right. Um, it's, it's nice. I mean, it's the first time since 08 that we've had right. yield in, in high quality short term. So there's there's alternatives to the old game, which was do you want zero or right. or roll the dice, you know. So well, and if if we do see the economy not move along quickly enough with the rates as high as they are, it would not be unheard of for the Fed to raise rate. I mean, excuse me, excuse me, to lower rates right. a click, which could also add another little bit of return right. to bonds. So well, so that's kind of the positioning. Um, you know, it, it's not a whole lot to talk about in terms of anything exciting going on in, in the markets. It's nothing uh, like we've seen in the last few years, which is great. For those of you that got our article we put out last month, Here Comes the Sun, I think we're, we're in an environment where investors are gonna get paid to be investors again. And that's uh, that's really healthy and happy and, and, and been a long time coming through COVID. So if you have any questions or you have any specific things you wanna ask us about, we're here. Um, anything else you wanna add before we wrap it up? I think we got it. All right, gang, well, have a good rest of the year, and uh, I'm gonna run us through our required disclosures. The views of those are from Adam Financial Partners and should not be construed as investment advice. All information is believed to be from reliable sources. However, we make no representation to its completeness or accuracy. All economic and performance information is historical and not indicative of future results. Please consult your financial advisor for more information.